Do you want to make films that go beyond little tiny looping internet GIFs and unrendered pencil tests? If you want to produce any animated film of any large size, there's a way to do it that's much different to a typical pencil test. If you're signed on to the Animated Guild Short Film Contest, this will help you especially. When I'm making an animation, I want to keep on schedule, I want to collaborate with other artists, use multiple softwares, and keep the files of my animation reasonably secure. This method does all of that and more. I'll show you how to prepare project files for animation production using my work in progress short film as the example. While this isn't the most glamorous part of the animation process, it is essential and a high value skill to have. If you're participating in the short film contest 2023, or if you have future plans to produce an animated series, a short film or a feature length film, this is really essential material to learn. This process fits in after pre-production. So after you have cut together your animatic and before production, before starting to keyframe the animation of your shots. It joins up these two phases of animation production. I'm using TV Paint for this, but you can adapt this approach to any animation software. So let's begin. Okay, step one, if you haven't already, cut a rough animatic for your animation. I use Adobe Premiere for this by dragging the image sequence into a Premiere folder, putting the storyboards onto the timeline and then individually cutting the storyboards on the timeline. I like to edit without the sound first to let the natural rhythm of the visuals speak to me. Later I can adjust it when I add temporary sounds to the animatic. But if you want, you can use something like Toon Boom Storyboard Pro to cut your animatic, you don't have to use Adobe Premiere. So anyway, the rest of these instructions are assuming that you've already gotten past the animatic phase, like you're, you're ready to animate your animation. Step two is to number your storyboards. Numbering your storyboards forces you to be decisive over which shots are left in your animation and which shots are taken out. It also will give you an easy way to keep track of your shots for collaborations and it will reveal how many shots your animation will be made of, which can be useful in calculating how much time you need to create your animation. So it's a very good step for planning and scheduling your animation production timeline. Step number three, resize your storyboard file if you need to. In TV Paint, this is very easy. You go to Modify Project and you're able to redefine the resolution of your TV Paint file. Personally, I have a bit of a unique approach to this, which uh, you don't have to follow, but I'll explain my process here. I made my storyboards in a 1080p resolution, but 1080p is too low of a resolution to work in if you want your film to be shown up on a cinema screen someday. So moving into the animation process, I start by scaling up my storyboards file to 4K, and that's 3840 by 2160. When I do this, I check the box stretch to new size. This ensures that everything in the file is scaled along with the canvas. Now I carefully draw a red box around the edge of my frame, coming right up against the borders of the TV Paint canvas. I then modify this 4K version of the project again, increasing the resolution to 5K, which is 5120 by 2880. This time I unchecked the box stretch to new size. Clicking modify gives me this, a 4K image plus a nice cushioned border around the edge. As I animate, I will let my animation drawings spill over into this surrounding zone, and this will give me the freedom to add some simple 2D camera movements in post, such as camera shake, gentle camera swaying to give the shot a handheld feeling, tilting and zooming in and out. So I can animate without worrying about any small changes I might want to make later on to the camera position and the camera movement. It's much more forgiving this way. The reason this is not typical is because I do all of my 2D camera movements in After Effects in the post-production phase. Other animators I know sometimes want to do their 2D camera movements inside their animation software using the virtual camera during their animating. So they would do this step differently, probably by using the virtual camera inside TV Paint Premium. So that was resizing the storyboard file. Moving on to step number four, 
create a spreadsheet of your animation production. For this, I use Microsoft Excel or Google Sheets. Members of my Getting Started in 2D Animation course have access to my shot list template. So you can go ahead and download that if you're inside the course. Uh, you can go to animatorguild.com and have a look at the uh, course that I offer there. Step five, along with the number of your shots, create a little one line description of your shot. This will become really useful when you're looking through your shot list to have a mental image of each shot on the list without needing to go through your TV paint file to find out which shot corresponds to which number on your list. Step six, in TV paint, divide up your storyboard into individual clips. This will allow you later to build a unique timeline for each shot in your film. I do this in TV Paint by copying the frames, creating a new clip and pasting it in. Here I have my shot list and here I have the storyboard in a single sequence of images within TV Paint. This is what my shot list looks like. So you'll see here on this side, this column represents the files where the shots are going to be divided up into their own specific TV Paint files. This is really important for the security of your project. To not have all your eggs in one basket, to not have everything on the same file, because if that file gets corrupted, if it crashes and you lose progress, then that's really bad news for your whole production and you don't want that. Also, it enables collaboration because two or more people can be working on the project at the same time if you have it spread across multiple files. This is the column to show where each shot is divided. This is the shot list column. This is the description column where each shot is described in a very short summary. Some of them I just have fun with and mess around with because I'm working on this project by myself. It's just a place for me to have fun. This is how long each shot lasts for. That's gonna become important later on. And this is how long each shot lasts for in frames. So there's a frame conversion using this spreadsheet for each um, second runtime, and it calculates that automatically because we're working on my shot list template. By the way, if you want to download this shot list template for yourself and use it, it has some cool features like it converts the duration from seconds into frames. It just makes it very easy to translate. Or you can try and create your own shot list. That's totally fine too. I've been in the process here of taking these storyboards that are, once again, all arranged in numbered order onto the timeline. Each frame of this is a storyboard and I've numbered each shot in the top corner and that just makes it easier later on to correspond with the shot list. Taking a shot and pasting it onto its own clip. So there's two panels here in TV Paint. There's the timeline panel and there's the project panel, which gives you a top-down view of all of the clips in your project. I'm basically separating each storyboard so that it occupies its own clip. Well, not each storyboard, but each shot. So a shot is a moment in your animation that lasts from one cut to another cut. So sometimes you have multiple storyboards in the storyboarding process for one shot if you want to flesh it out with extra detail. I've gotten quite far through this already. I'm on shot 79 right now. So if I click onto that, you can see in the timeline panel, it's just one drawing. I haven't given it time yet. The aim, first of all, is to arrange each shot to have its own clip. You want its own timeline by itself so that you can basically build up the scene, the animation of the scene, fresh every time. So here's how I'm doing it in TV Paint. I have arranged some keyboard shortcuts, which you can, you'll be able to download. Um, again, getting started members get to download these, but you can also modify the keyboard shortcuts in TV Paint. Um, you can just press Control K and it brings up this keyboard shortcuts panel and you can assign on here, you can assign these shortcuts, like for example, Shift B is unoccupied. I could then search in the name of what I wanted. So uh, clip, I'll just put in clip and then find, okay, in under project, clip add, that's probably going to do it. But anyway, I already have that set up. But first of all, I just double click. I've done shot 79, so now I'll do shot 80. I double click on the title of that and I name it shot 80, press enter, and then I, press shift minus and it will add a clip on. So this is a scene right now. You see how these two clips are kind of joined together. 
So I'm going to go 80, 81, 82, 83, 84, 85. Let me just check with my shot list that I did that right. Okay, this file 17 is actually 80 to 84. So I'm just going to delete that clip. I'm going to rename these. So this is going to be shot 81. Double click. This is going to be shot 82. This is going to be shot 83. 84. What I want to say is that the larger your project is, the more important file organization becomes. If you're working on a little five second clip for in Instagram or something, a little five second loop, you don't need to do all this. You don't need to go through this procedure. But if you're making a short film, this short film is going to be between three and a half and four minutes in length, I estimate. You're going to need to do this to stay on top of it. Otherwise, it could really cause problems later on. So I've annotated in the top right hand corner of this storyboard, this is shot 80, but this is also shot 80. And so is this, I actually modified it and did one like that. And then that's shot 81 afterwards. So let me go through them. I'm gonna hold down shift and with my arrow keys, press forwards. 80, 80, 81. Okay, I pressed shift, I, I pressed the arrow key back. So now if I zoom in on the timeline, by holding down shift as I was moving through those frames, you can see that it's selected that area of the frames. I'm gonna press Control C to copy those frames. I'm gonna press Shift Tab. And what this is doing is, although we're not on the Projects tab, I'll show you what I did there. So Tab moves me forward through the clips. You see, once you go to the end, you press Tab, you end up at the beginning again. Shift Tab takes me backwards through the clips. So I can move about. Uh, forwards and backwards through the clips just by doing that even if I'm on the timeline panel I, I'm pressing tab I'm moving backwards and forwards through the clips I'm basically tabbing my way through when you're on the timeline here you can tell what clip you're on with this number here before that's what I named this clip so I know that that's for shot 84 let me move backwards 82 81 80 79 so going to 80 control V pasting those frames in now we've got all the storyboards marked with 80 in the top corner on its corresponding clip, clip 80. An annoying thing is it often leaves the blank keyframe, so I just go and erase it that. So right now this has no timing, so if I press play, it's just gonna look terrible. We're gonna add timing later. So I've done shot 80 there, and this is for file number 17. You see, I'm by the end of this, I'm gonna have 18 different TV Paint files containing this film within. I will press tab to go back to the first clip. And in this clip is the full storyboard. Move forward to shot 81, hold shift, and then you see it's selecting those frames. Okay, we go to 82 and then we step back one. So we just got 81, control C, shift tab to move backwards, 82, clip 81. Okay, I know I'm in the right place, control V. You see, I'm navigating as much as I possibly can using just the, the keys. It's a lot more efficient to do that in this stage instead of going everywhere with the mouse. You can speed this up to be really fast. So you should be able to rattle through these in a day or so if you're doing a short film of any length. Okay, so I've done that file. Now I go to project, double click to create a new scene, double click again to rename, 80, five enter and then shift minus 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 i know this seems quite complex but it's actually a very simple idea at the core of it you're just distributing these to uh, different files now you might be thinking but this is all in one file you haven't achieved your goal yet of distributing these shots to be in clustered files and you're right, we haven't gotten there yet. So I will go ahead and demonstrate that later on. I'm just adding time to these storyboards now. So I'm gonna just bring up this. I'm on shot 20, clip 20, 38.4 frames it says here. This is what I measured from the animatic in Adobe Premiere. I'm gonna round that up to 39. I round up each of these decimals. I'll just stretch that, go to 39 there, tab onto the next one. You just rinse and repeat. You want these repeat actions. It's the easiest way to get your way through this is by batching a lot of these processes. Um, it's, it's what you've got to do when you've got dozens of shots like this. Shot 21, 
41 frames. This I've got multiple frames, so thing I do to make it quick is just pull it out by that tab there. We're at 41, and then I set it to stretch. So when I do that, you see it stretches out the second frame with it. And we just keep going through. We keep doing this. Let's move down one. 31.2, so 32. There will be time for more fine tuning later, but now we just want to do this very simple procedure in between. What this does is when you set in the timeline how much time you measured from the animatic, you're carrying that calculation you made in the animatic when you had a top down view of all of the shots and how they worked together. You're carrying that runtime estimate forwards into the animation process. That's how long this shot is going to last for. Later on, then one of the later steps when I'm doing the key animation, when points are going to actually occur. The more likely thing is for a shot like this is that I will just create a new layer above and create my frames fresh. So I might actually just hide this and try and reconstruct it, drawing it from scratch. That's the more likely thing that will happen. Step seven. Split your animation into separate files. This is vital for a large animation project because it will protect your film from corruption. Corruption of the file or losing progress. Um, if something happens to your file, it will only happen to a maximum of five shots in your animation production and not all of the shots in your animation production. Files get increasingly unstable the larger they get. In my short list template, it already has a recommendation for how to divide up the files. And my recommendation is to have no more than five average shots per file. I start this process by using the file save as shortcut, renaming the file until I have a sufficient number of duplicates. In this, I have 18 duplicates of this storyboard TV paint file. Then inside the file, I delete every clip except the right clips for this file. The end result should be a number of TV paint files that have the corresponding storyboards that are shown on your shot list. So for example, file one of this uh, project will have shots one to five. File two will have shots six to 10. File three will have shots 11 to 15 and so on and so forth. Step eight, this is an optional extra. I like to shoot reference footage and collect reference images for every shot in my animation. I'm very thorough like that. So for easy file organization, I create a fresh folder for every shot of my film. The keyboard shortcut to create a new folder is Control Shift N. So this can be done very rapidly when using the keyboard shortcut. And I just number them according to which shot it is. An easy alternative for this is just chucking everything in one folder, but if the project is large enough, it might become difficult to find that specific reference image you're looking for for the shot you're working on if everything, if every reference material is just all in the same folder. Okay, I was going to read out all of these uh, benefits that you'll get from following these steps, but instead I'm just going to throw them up on the screen because I want to save your time, but essentially I found 10 pretty good reasons why you should follow these steps. And for my four minute short film, this took me about a day to set up in total. So it's a day well spent if you ask me. Of course, all of this is just recommendations and it's my way of working. I have known people who just like to wing it with without a clear plan of where they're going. And that can work for some people. I just know that if I'm going to be working on a project for many months of my life, I generally want to go in with a strong game plan and a structure that's going to minimize inconveniences later down the line. One of the most dreaded words in the animator's dictionary is the word revisions. It makes me shudder just to say it out loud. We would all have less revisions to do on projects if we all just took the time to plan things thoroughly, especially the people in management roles. When you're working independently on a short film, you are your own manager. You have to give yourself revisions when you mess up. So plan ahead, anticipate what you will need further down the line in your animation production. 
As you get further along in your project, you build up more drawings. This makes it increasingly difficult to make wild pivots in the animation, such as cutting out a scene or adding some more time onto a scene or expanding the edges of the border of your shot to uh, accommodate some camera movement. Like that stuff all becomes increasingly difficult to do the more drawings you have. In other words, it takes less time to plan something than it does to fix the mistake that arises through lack of planning. Planning increases the likelihood that you will complete your animation. Effective planning can also reduce crunch time, which can have a significant increase to the quality of your life. So planning is good. Please plan. So if this topic appeals to you, if you like learning about animation, I talk about this animation pipeline in more depth in my comprehensive online course called Getting Started in 2D Animation. And the link to that will be in the description of this video. I hope that you have gained something from this video. My channel focuses on helping animators. So subscribe if you want to see more and start watching my back catalog starting with this video. Okay, I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.